Anyway, um, speaking of gorillas, would you have placed the TNT title match between Wardlow and Dino D where they did right after the Punk interview first match on this program? It's supposed to be, you know what? Allegedly supposed to be more about great wrestling. Not only would I have not done that, in watching this show live, this was the one thing I wasn't a big fan of until at least the finish, because then at least, you know, when the crowd reacts like that, it gets you into it a little bit. Yeah. But Wardlow, he's so cold right now. Even though, like, they're trying it again with him, it's just, I don't know, it's not working. I mean, he lost the title, so I guess it's not working in kayfabe either. But there's something so cold about him right now that it took me out of it a little bit when this was the next match. Well, think about this, though. Besides that, I'm talking about the performance aspect. We know a lot of people are cold. They can heat them back up if they're heatable. But Wardlow, he got over his appearance, his size, the dominant powerbomb symphony on all those stooges that he did for so long. And for, honestly, much like Goldberg, but at the same time, Bill Goldberg is a lot more outgoing and aggressive personality than Wardlow seems to be in real life. But much like his early time, he can be aggressive and he can be intense and he can be explosive for two minutes, two and a half minutes, whatever the case, but when it has to go longer, that is lacking. And then it only comes in fits and spurts. And I also compare Wardlow to Lex Luger at this stage, because at that time, people were saying, well, Luger looks great. The body's great. Boy, you know, he's got the height and the size, but he can't work. His work's a shits. That's what the boys would say, right? Especially in other territories, and, you know, but even some in Crockett, you know, well, we'll lead Luger along through it. Well, that was in 1986, and that was somewhat true. But my 19... 87, 88, especially, as we've talked about, if you had that Lex Luger in the ring today, he would be goddamn one of the biggest stars in the business, and the guys were still thinking, well, he's green, but he's coming along. You know what I think is an even better comparison? He's Kevin Nash in 95. Kevin Nash, as a heel, as a cool heel bodyguard, got over. Yeah. Eliminating all those guys in the Royal Rumble, the place started cheering for him. He got over as that guy. They said, okay, fans are cheering for him. Let's turn him babyface. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he became... And make him smile. It took his edge off. He didn't really come back until he turned back heel later on. And then he wore a Christmas sweater. Right. But, but, but here's the thing. Nash, from the start, had some element of the big man psychology. Yes. And definitely. And that's what his primary strength was from start to the finish, was his big man psychology. But the reason I compared Wardlow to Lex is because Wardlow, he's still, he does moves well, and he's very agile, and he can do the swanton and the rolling thing. But he tries too many moves while not being, he's not aggressive in terms of his face, in terms of his body language. His strikes look weak. He looks tentative. He doesn't grab a guy and manhandle him like a big guy should. He's throwing Dino douche, who's as big as he is, rolling him into the ring with a fucking, you know, a whisper and a fucking tickle. It was an indie level big man match that if I was on a scouting trip for the WWF at the time or anybody, I would have evaluated this and said, both these guys should go to OVW. They've obviously just started, but look at their bodies and, and they are athletic. Maybe we can train them. The problem is, they've all been working for several years. But uh, whereas Luger was in the ring every night, either alongside or against the Four Horsemen and the fucking Rock and Roll Express and, and if at midnight, every great talent in the business and was learning steadily Wardlow once a week, if that power bombs somebody or whatever for I don't know how long. And that's been his. And even if he's in in class, you can't just train all that in class. Anyway, that's, to me, 
the announcers were calling the match. That's unusual in AEW. There was some fighting on the floor, but it was at a minimum. There was no furniture. They were trying to have a wrestling match, but Dino's fairly the shits, and Wardlow's still green at at presenting himself the way he needs to be to get over. That's what I think. My Kevin Nash comparison, though, is less about the actual working ability. It's more about the effects of what happened. Again, the fans started cheering for the person naturally. He kind of went with that. And then once the turn happens, once the championship is won by Kevin Nash in WWE, or once Wardlow defeats MJF, it's just a giant letdown from there. It feels like the edge is taken off the person. Yes. So but that's the comparison I'm I'm yeah. and I and I see your comparison and I raise it, but even the the idea is now for him to get them back interested in him. And his performance is not showing that because he's not as intense for as long and against another guy as big who's also green. Point I'm making is Wardlow now is also a live in-concert performance by Strawberry Alarm Clock after they've done Incense and Peppermints. What do you follow it with? Is he being miscast as a babyface right now? Probably. Not that you want to switch people back and forth too much, but he's switched once and he's lost everything that kind of made him popular before he turned. Well, and but one of the things that made him popular was Christian was browbeating him and things. Oh, fuck it. I think we're spending too much time on analyzing his career. Point is, he got beat here in a fairly eh, match. Christian is the, the best worker and the best talent. He's on the floor. But when Dino drew the referee, Christian grabbed one of the photographer's cameras at ringside and hit Wardlow over the head with it twice, as a matter of fact. And Dino covered him one, two, three. But as I said, there was no comedy. They didn't fight on the floor. There was no furniture. Even though this was not a, a good match because there was no real leader in the ring, you can still see they're trying to make this show different. Thank fucking God. To me, this was the only thing on the show I was disappointed with, really. Everything else was kind of a mild surprise at times. <laughs> and this is the one thing I just didn't like on the show.